Hello, everyone. Can you hear me? Can you guys hear me? All right, so uh, today uh, we're gonna, today's our last day of 372 this semester. Uh, we're just wrapping up, so I just have a few announcements. Again, you know, as I, as I usually remind you, we have our exam on Monday. Don't forget about that. Um, Drop boxes are open for homework assignments if, if, you, if you need to submit. I've also opened the drop boxes for the project A and B, so you can go to the projects folder and submit there, okay? Um, also, I remind you, uh, you know, you've received some emails probably about the teaching evaluations. Make sure you complete those. And please expect by tomorrow, I will add a couple of links on the ABET survey, so please complete those as well. Just you know, just finish that out, okay? And then that's about it, okay? So with that being said, um, I'm gonna open the floor to questions. And if you don't have questions, uh, then please, um, you know, just volunteer to go first and do your. And let's let's get started with the presentations. Uh, Mr. Calc. Yeah, can um, you speak up a little bit louder? Uh, yeah, can you hear me? Uh, slightly, yeah, slightly better, yes. All right, um, I was just wondering, so projects like A and B, uh, me and Jeremy are pre already presented, what do you want us to turn in exactly? So, right, so, you know, I usually need to have some document, documentation, some evidence of your work. So I just need a report. So for instance, for project, the Hadoop project, just like a lab report, and then okay. for the other project, the topic you guys did an email, it would be, uh -huh. It's the thing, just a lab report. That's really all you guys. Okay, have. so just some screenshots with some documentation. That's right. That's right. <clears throat> okay, gotcha, gotcha. You can also include the slides so you can zip that and submit it. I, I created two separate drop boxes, one for project A and one for project B. Okay, cool. Thank you. Yeah. Okay, that's it. Um, so, uh, Professor? Yes. Uh, so There's last weekend, I sent you an email say uh, I want to present on May 4th, uh, uh, but it's, it's a mistake. I should send it to another professor. I mean, I sent okay. it to Ram, Ram, sorry. That's okay, don't worry. I mean, I, okay. <laughs> if there's no disruption, you know, it's no problem. Um, okay, so Sihan, are you going first? Is that what you're- Okay, yeah, okay. Okay, so please, uh, you know, State who is in your group, you know, you know, so I know and, and uh Yo Song, Ying Hao Ju and the Sihan Wang. How many people? Three. 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 Okay, so just slowly. Who's first? Uh I mean we oh, uh Yo Zhu has already uh present, present, present for the Hadoop. Yeah, so we need we today we need, we present our uh, HTTPS server. Okay, so Today you're you're doing so you have your names on a on a slide or something? Yes. Okay. All right. Go ahead. Share your screen. Uh, give me time to get your names and then you know go from there. Uh, okay. So can you sh can you see my screen? Okay. Yeah. Uh, let me, we, let me uh, get your names. Give me a sec. Uh, Sihan Wang. Uh, you can see the screen we put on here. Sihan Wang, Yu Zhuo Song, and Ming Hao Zhu. Give me a sec. Okay, so you're presenting configuring an HTTPS server. Okay, go ahead. Yeah. And uh, we made a video recording every step we do to make sure that uh, when I am demonstrating our project, there's no error happen, okay? Yeah. Okay, so the first, uh, we, we want to introduce you how to establish your own uh, HTTPS service in Linux. And the first uh, week we need to buy a, we can, we can buy a Linux server and it can provide you an external IP, an external IP address. And you can also do this on your own personal computer, but uh, I'm, I'm not sure your external IP may, may work. 
and uh, it is not convenient. You, you may need to deal with a lot of trouble. So, so I don't recommend you to uh, do it on a personal computer. And uh, so let's see this picture. Uh, we can see that here is our uh, external IP. And uh, the, first one. the first one, and uh, we copy it to the to the third part uh, domain name register, and uh, you can see that here is our host name, which is four four not found dot fail and the www dot four four not found dot fail, and we pass it to it. Okay, and then we we can connect our Linux server. Okay, so so uh, the first step uh, we apt uh, we update our app. And uh, it is not a, it's, it's not necessary, but it can um, keep the software up to date. Yes. Okay. Then <coughs> we need to type uh, this command. Uh, so let we stop here. Let we stop here, and uh, so we use OpenSSL as our uh, service to create our certificate. And uh, x dash x five o nine means a standard defining the format of public key certificate. And uh, RSA one o two four is uh, is an encrypted algorithm. Is how we encrypt our uh, per key and the dash key out after dash key out is the place we save our uh, right. private key and uh, after dash out it's the place we save our public key so we also need to type some information about our certificate like country name, like state or province name, locality name, yeah, and uh, organization name. And we need to make sure that uh, our common name is the same as our domain name, which is for for not found doctor. Okay, so now we have the IP, we have our certificate. And uh, the next step is to Install Apache Apache Two, which is our web web server. And uh, we can test where. Yeah, you can see that our web server is working properly. And uh, but it not use HTTPS protocol, so we need to make some uh, make some change. So the so first, we open our SSL, and then we enable the default SSL configuration. Yeah, and uh, we also need to ch edit our SSL configuration. We need to add something. Yeah. You can see that default SSL.com. Okay, so here we need to add our server name, which is for for not found of well. And uh, here we need to uh, change it to our 
to the place where we store our private key and the public key, which is the same as what I type in the ma in our uh, first command, and then we we restart it. Uh, Restart our Apache too. So now, if we go to our website, type https dot https four four, and stop here. Okay, and uh, your your browser. We are remind you that your connection is not private. But this is because we made a self-signed certificate, and uh, it is not trusted. If you want to, if you want to make a trusted certificate, you need to find a third park, uh, a certificate authority, and uh, you need to you give them your information, and they will give you the public key and private key. But you need to pay a lot of money on it, so. Uh, we just made an we just made a self signed certificate, so it's yeah. And uh, you can see here, uh, it's HTTPS for for not found out there. It's using HTTPS, but but if someone just type for for not found out there, here just type for for not found out there, it was still using it will still use uh, HTTP protocol. So we need to redirect it to HTTPS server. So now, next step, redirect it. We change this, this document. And uh, here we add uh, Uh, rewrite engine. And our server name, server name which is for from the font of file. And we redirect it to it, you, and we redirect it by using HTTPS, using HTTPS protocol. Okay, so now we restart our server. So now if you just type your for for no found or fail in your browser, we will also use uh, HTTPS protocol. And uh, at last, we can change our homepage. We go to etc. aware www.tmura and uh, make a backup. Make a backup and uh, change it. Create a new website. Yeah. A website. So now, if um, if you guys now can type the the website the address to your browser, and you can see our uh, our homepage. Should it, should it? Yeah. Okay. So you guys can do it now, and it works. I think. You can. You can show it. Uh, next screen. Okay. No. Okay. And you can see our 
this is our home page and it is using it is use uh, using xtbs portal and it's it's all okay thank you very interesting I, ha I have a couple of questions for you um you're, you're doing this in the cloud so are you renting an instance in the cloud for this yes yeah Okay. We rent, um, you have to rent a full server for this, or are you renting like just space? Uh, only only one server. I just rent one server. On one cloud. server, right? When you yes. do keys like this, you have to rent an entire server. They don't yeah. like, like distribute it. Okay. Um, good. Now explain to me this name. Not 404 not found dot fail. Yeah. Yeah. Buy that domain. Uh, it is free in name.com if you use your edu email. If you have students, you're, you're the only email. ones that have this address, no one else has it? Yeah. Yeah, no one, ha no one has it. Because you're saying that anyone in the world can type this and they're going to come to this server. Yeah, if, if you, you can, everyone can type this website and uh, they will go to our website. Yeah, so how are you doing that for free? They're just renting this to you or? No, uh, a the, student account, it will give you a free domain name. Yeah, it will give a you a free, free domain name. name. Yeah, yeah, for one year. It seems like such a unique one, 404 not found dot fail. So that's why it seems, okay. Okay. Um, good. And so you have this, so you, yeah, you did the domain, you have, and then the private and public keys, you know, you did the, you did, uh, you did a self-signed certificate, right? So you didn't have to pay for it. Yeah. Yeah. You would, you could have added it, added your uh, certificate authorities key to your browser. And then by doing that, you wouldn't have had to add an exception that, however, that only works for your browser, but that's a, a workaround. Yeah, because the key is self-signed, so the browser will give you an exception. Well, no, I mean, you can do an exception or you can add your actual, cert, uh, you know, the, the public key, basically, of the certificate authority. You could put it on the browser and then browser? It'll, oh. it'll work. Okay, we'll, we'll, do, we'll do a lot of this in uh, 350. And so 350 is, is actually a lot about this. All right, great job, great job. Are there any questions for this group? No questions, all right. So if there are no questions, guys, are you presenting something else? No, no. We, we have finished both project, web, project A and project B. Okay, you already did the Hadoop presentation as well. Yeah, right? yes, oh, on Monday. On Monday, yeah. Okay, great. Okay. Thank you very much. Great job. Uh, do we have anyone else that's presenting? Uh, who else is going to present today? Can you just tell me that, please? Uh, Ryan and our, uh, I are going to present our final project. Okay. Who else? Uh, right here. Uh, Life. Me. Okay. Great. And uh, who else? Fei Zhuang? Uh, yeah, uh, I need to do my uh two project today anyone else cruise cruise you you still have to present something okay yep. okay anyone else did you hear me um me as well who's that who's late. that late late yeah okay late so you're gonna present as well mm -hmm. okay cruise what uh is austin presenting with you Uh, no, he's not. Okay, all right. All right, uh, so it seems that's everyone, I think. Okay, so- Yeah, who, for real. Who wants uh, to go next? Uh, uh, Ryan and I can go next. Go ahead. So, um, how do I share my screen? At the bottom, there's a button that says share. In the, in the menu, there's a menu. Oh, okay. Right, right, right. Okay. Let me uh, just pull up my VM. So that's going to be Jacob and Ryan Frederick. Yep. Okay. 
You have the floor. Uh, okay, so uh, our project was, uh, we chose to make a email server as well. Uh, we used Postfix and uh, IMAP and POP3 uh, protocols. Um, so first off, we uh, installed Postfix. Um, during the installation, it asks you uh, like what kind of uh, mail configuration you want to use. Uh, we chose internet site and then you choose a domain name. Uh, we made our domain name linuxmail.com. Um, but after you install Postfix, uh, you have to configure some of the configuration files. So first, uh, you have to uh, change the main.cf file in the Postfix directory to um, edit the my destination to include your uh, domain name, uh, change the network IPs which you want to broadcast to, and the mailbox directory. Um, so once Postfix is set up, um, we installed Dovecot, which is uh, an open source um, program that uh, manages IMAP and POP. Um, these are the configuration files we had to edit to get it to work. Um, this one changes, uh, allows the IMAP and POP protocols to be used. Um, this one uh, specifies uh, the mail location. The 10 dash master. Um, basically sets like the uh, authentication for users within the uh, mail server. Um, and it uses like the Linux users. So here uh, I show creating a uh, user named user test. And then their uh, sign in information to Thunderbird here. So I'm going to demonstrate this now. Uh, we'll make a new user named user4. Um, oops. So now that we have a user created, uh, we can use Thunderbird to access the email server. So here we can see that uh, we're connected to the email server and we can uh, show that it works by sending and receiving an email. And uh, here we can see that at the other uh, email, um, 
we received the mail from user four. Um, one issue that we ran into was uh, being able to broadcast to other VMs on a network. Uh, we tried setting that up, but we couldn't really get it to work. But uh, yeah. And I mean, I can also show uh, receiving mail. Uh, are there uh, any questions? Excellent. I think it's very interesting. I wonder what the, that issue you have with the multiple VMs is probably a, it's a DNS um, server issue. But you know that somehow they because you're using that domain Linux mail. Yeah, but I'm trying to connect via an IP, not the. Uh, oh, by IP. Okay. Exactly. So. Like I was, uh, I was messing around, messing around with it for a few days, but I couldn't really get a tour. Okay. All right. But great job. I mean, you, you've demonstrated quite a bit. I mean, uh, you know, setting up an email server, you know, does take a little bit. So great job. I think it's an excellent project. Um, are there any questions for this group? All right. Excellent job. Uh, are you guys presenting something else? Uh, we presented, um, the yeah we did the hadoop monday okay all right so who is going next then uh me Pedron wong okay who are you presenting with uh just just me okay go ahead uh Uh, uh, I will talk about the uh, head of project. Uh, for this project, the first uh, I need to first I download the head of installation package, uh, and uh, then I create a folder in PTE. Here and uh, then after that, I uncompress it, uh, uncompress the uh, pressure, and uh, then is uh, configure for the ENV file. And uh, then after that, I configure side core side files. Uh, which is at the property part in in this file, and the uh, configure to ADF as site file, and uh, and the configure uh, other files. Just using same uh, VI and uh, then I start up of a uh, head of cluster uh, use the uh, use VI and uh,
then I use format file. Uh, then for the format file system, uh, so uh, that's the step how I install the head up and uh, that's it. Okay, so you showed us the slides. Are you going to demo? Yeah. Uh, Is this I, single node or multi node? Uh, multi node. I mean, I I I use three three web three three virtual machine to do it, but uh, most stuff is on the master master machine and. Uh, just uh, only few steps on on two slave machine. Okay, can you please demo? Uh, sure. Um, looks they are a little slow of other two virtual virtual machines. So if you want, um, let someone else present and then you get everything set up and then you can come back and do the demo um, after. Okay, sorry. Make sense? All right, and then are you presenting anything else right now that you have the time or? Uh, uh, let me, uh, after I finish this one, I think. Sorry, say it again? Uh, um i i think i can do it after after i i finish this one it looks like i'm okay my right, working so machine you'll... has some problem all right you'll come back let's let's have someone else uh present um i can go all right uh who are you presenting with um just myself okay
Okay, so share your screen and uh, you can start then. What are you presenting? Um, not the Hadoop, the second one. My bad. Okay. You guys, you can see my screen, right? Yeah. So go ahead, do your slides, then your do your demo, and uh, yep. All right. Yeah. Have the floor. Got it. I will be talking about Gparted. Um, so what it is is a free partition manager that enables you to resize, copy, and move partitions without any data loss. Um, one of its really good main features that's easy to use and it supports about every um, file system that there's out there. And the way you install it is sudo app get install gparted. And I will go ahead and with the demo right now. So this is pretty much the program. Um, and from there, you can just simply, you know, right click on your partition, resize and move um, from left to right, something like that. Um, you can also create new partitions with whatever size you want, with whatever file system you can um, pick. Um, You can also view the device uh, information. And that's pretty much it. I don't, it might be, yeah, it's not that long, but yeah. All right, so can you give us a scenario that you would use this for? Um, You can do this with the, um, you can use this for backups as well, right? Backups? Um, for backups. Okay. How so? Um, maybe by creating a new partition to use and store data on and leave the main one, for example, alone. Okay. Um, All right. Yeah. Okay. All right. So, um, are there any questions for Lathe? Okay, no questions. Lathe, are you gonna be presenting anything else today? No. No, okay. All right, so who is going next? I'll go. Cruz, Cruz okay. Yep. Are you presenting alone, Cruz? Yeah, I am doing uh, my research project that okay. the soup one. Yeah. Okay. Um, okay. Can you see my PowerPoint? Yes. All right. So the program that I did to research is called Zabbix. What is Zabbix? Zabbix is an open source monitoring tool for network servers, virtual machines, and cloud services. Zabbix provides monitoring metrics such as network utilization, CPU load, disk space, and consumption. 
So some of the history behind it, Zabbix was created by Alexei Vladishev in 1998 as an internal project for a bank that he worked for. In 2001, Alpha One was released under GPL license, and in 2004, the first stable release, Zabbix 1.0, was released, followed by versions 2, 3, and 4 in 2012, 2016, and 2018, respectively. So why would you choose Zabbix? Because there's going to be a lot of software out there that does basically the same thing. So here's why I, one of the reasons I picked Zabbix is because uh, Zabbix provides you detailed history graphs that show trends clearly and will allow you to view by the minute as well if you need to see a short term uh, trend in anything. Uh, there's custom dashboards that allow you to monitor only what is relevant to you. Uh, the trigger framework, which will show you an alert, uh, is really detailed, but that also leads a little bit to some of the cons because that trigger framework is also really complex and tedious, but once it's mastered, it works well, but the problem is you have to master it, and the UI isn't the cleanest. Uh, the documentation is also not all there for Zabbix. You'll have to um, source out your peers and other Zabbix users for help. Um, some other features of Zabbix is it's compatible with Linux, HPUX, Mac OS, Solaris, and more. For Windows, monitoring is only possible through an agent. Um, Zabbix uses MySQL, Maria database, uh, Post, GRE SQL, SQL Lite, Oracle, or IBM DB2 to store data. It's written in C and PHP. You're, uh, it has the ability to discover and monitor hundreds of thousands of devices automatically. It has SLA, ITIL, KPI reporting metrics. Um, the visual console screens and dashboards are pretty intuitive, like the graphs, those are really good. It's one of the strong points of Zabbix. And you have remote command execution through Zabbix proxies. So I did, I did a little bit of an installation guide for because there's not much documentation out there. So I did it for anyone that might be looking to do this. So first step is you just install LAMP server. There's the code there for it. Then you download the Zabbix server repositories, then you install Zabbix server. Then you have to create the database for Zabbix using MySQL, which is in that lower screenshot right there. Once you do that, you make changes to the Zabbix configuration file to enable the database connection. So you can see that I just set the database name as Zabbix database and the user is Zabbix and I give it the password. And so once you do that, uh, you have to get your IP address with ifconfig, and then you put that in the uh, search engine, and then slash zabbix slash setup.php, and that will bring you to the zabbix page where you can fit, finalize the setup, and zabbix will let you know if you have all the prerequisites ready to get everything going. So as you can see in that screenshot to the left, everything was okay, and once I did that, uh, it was a success installing zabbix. And so I will go over to my VM now. and you can see my VM, right? So here's my IP, just so you can see, 192.168.217.154, so that's what you put in the top here, then Zabbix index.php, because like I said, it runs on PHP. So my username, let's see, admin, password, Zabbix. Here's the main page of, the, of Zabbix. So you can see some statistics right here. Um, let's see, posts. So you can see uh, this is the Zabbix server, which is all I have set up for now. Oh wait, oops, wrong page. But you see if I can check it, I can, um, Enable or disable it, and I have it enabled. So if I go to monitoring and then triggers, so the default triggers. Hold on one second, dashboard triggers. Oh, well, there's one, there's just one trigger here for now. It says uh, Zabbix agent on Zabbix server is unreachable. And you can see it gave it a severity warning of average. But the server is up because um, I can ping it through one of Zabbix's 
built in things. It's so like I said, the complexity is a con of this. But if I go to the Zavix server here, I can ping it. Um, is it IT services? Just give me a minute so I can navigate this. There we go. So here's one of the graphs, which so I just set it up. There's not really anything going on. But apparently I'm having a problem with the Zavix server. It was just running, but no, it's still running. But I have some kind of problem that I need to uh, address here. But it is monitoring itself. It knows it has a problem. The website operates. So and that's pretty much it for Zavix. All right, great. Uh, very interesting project. Do you know if it's running uh, SNMP in the background or is it just, you know, other? Um, I do not think so. It you might could you connect it to other devices or you're just running? You're just no, it's just on my VM right local now. Local machine, okay. Right. All right, uh, very interesting. So there's a lot of examples of this. Did you generate, can you generate graphs with this? Uh, I don't really have anything to okay, but like, like, you know, like the graph yes. screen is here, but there's no data for it. Okay, because you haven't so. queried. So it probably has a little bit of a something to query other machines. All right. Uh, All right. Are there any questions for Cruz? All right, no questions. Cruz, are you presenting anything else? No, I did my Hadoop on Monday, so that's it. Okay, great. All right, who's next? Oops. No one's going next. Did everyone present? All right, let let me go through the list. Uh, Cruz just presented. Uh, Jacob, you guys are done, I believe. Jeremy. Lath have presented, Mark has presented, uh, Ming Hao, Yusei, and Sihan presented, I believe. Brian, Frederick, you've presented. So I think everyone has presented, correct? Okay. Uh, Fei Zhuan, you were still uh, finishing up your presentation. Are you ready? Uh, it looks like that uh, head up still uh, didn't work. I don't know what's uh, what's wrong with it. Maybe I can just start on project B. I mean, okay. Uh, okay. Uh, my project B is about uh, creating and uh, managing of file system. Please share your screen. Huh? Oh, sorry. Uh, my, my project B is about the creating and the managing of the system. And uh, about, uh, I will talk about the uh, file system structure uh, ext uh, ext3 file system, creating file system, packing file system, mounting and unmounting file system, and uh, disk quotas. And for file system, the project deals with the structure of the uh, file system. Uh, and uh, uh, and uh, a file system is a data structure which interprets the physical structure of a disk into logical directory structure. The logical structure will help computers and users to trace files. The file system registers the location of the files and the directories on the disk. Mm. And the file system structure is the most basic level of the organization in yeah, operating operating system. So that means it's the function of it. And uh, a file system is an organization of storage space 
intended to contain file in directories. Providing a common file system structure ensures users and the programs are able to access and write files. Uh, all the file systems are divided into two categories, static, static and the dynamic files. Uh, and Linux supports several file systems, but the most commonly used was the second extender or we call ext2 file system. And now the ext2 file system is being replaced by third extended or ext3 file system, which is a journaling version of ext2 file system. Uh, it supports partitions that are up to four terabytes or uh, 4,000 96 gigabits inside and the file of up to two gigabits inside. Um, besides the Unix, the word is mode of permission. The ex 2 file system structs give a view that uh, controls our attributes. To enable file attributes, the following command is used for this one. And, and I tried it on my own, my virtual machine. And I'm still not sure that can, can work, but I make a screenshot in here. And uh, then it talk about create file system. We can use uh, a file system are created on the partitions. The partitions have to create it before creating a system. By the default, it's two file system is generated when the make file system comment is used. But now, xc 3 is a file system by default. To create a file system, we can use other MPFS to do it. And here is a screenshot. Uh, for checking file system, file system needs to be maintained and the periodic checks have to be promoted on the file system. This is one of the tasks of system administrator and Linux has the unity that checks and repairs the file system error report, reboot and performs the process quickly. Checking files, it, for checking file system, uh, system administrators takes include maintaining file system privilege. The unity FSCK, which means file system check, is used generally to check the repair file system. And here is. Then it's for mounting and unmounting file system. Mounting of file system is instructing the operating system to make a file system available for use a particular location. That particular location is called the main point. When the user is no longer use the file, then the file system should be unmounted. A file system is mounted on directories so that it access users. And after we unmount the file system, we can move move that part and the uh, links will allow only the file system that are not in the use to be mounted. And uh, it's for Discord. In a multi-user environment, problems such as user utilizing more than repair space persist and uh, this can be rectified by many methods. The this quarter, quarter is a successful method of Linux that permits the system administrator to distribute the amount of this space. Assigned this cost is fixable and is implemented per file system. And this quarter can be created, modified, and eliminated using the comment. And, and uh, for use this one, I installed the quarter on my virtual machine. So for this product, uh, 
I talk about file system structures is the fundamental level of organization is the operating system. And the file system is created using MTFS. That means make file system common. And the mount and mount comments are used to mount and mount file system respectively. And the disk quarter is a successful method of Linux for loading disk space. Uh, that's it. Are you going to demo? Um, no, I mean, I think my virtual machine still has some problems. So sorry, I cannot show any other demo, just a screenshot. Okay. All right. Um, are there any questions for Feijuan? Okay, no questions. Do we have anyone else that's going to present today? Anyone else presenting today? Uh, hey, Calix. Yeah. Um, for, so for the project mailboxes, do you want me and Jeremy to each submit one, or do you just want one from both of like from yeah. both of us, or just one? I usually prefer. Um, one from every student, it just makes it easier for me to grade that way. Okay, cool, just double check it. Yep. All right. Uh, anyone else? Um, Calix, I have a question. Go ahead. Um, on the, the CNMP homework and the simple SNMP script homework, for some reason those were turned in but today, for some reason, it just disappeared on Blackboard, and it just says that it's not turned in. The one that's due, uh, that was due April fifteenth. I actually extended the drop the 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 submission date, so I reopened them. Is that what you mean? The okay, yeah, I I noticed, but why is my submission not there anymore? I don't know. You, if you submitted, you, I guess you could always submit again. I haven't. I haven't touched. I, I didn't delete okay. it or anything. Okay, I just yeah, I just kind of wanted to some clarification. I don't know. I, like you know, that Blackboard is pretty good that way. I haven't touched it. There's no. If you submitted it, there's no reason why it's not there. Um, okay. What I all I can say is I did re. I had some requests to reopen it, so I. I I reopened it. It'll cl everything closes Friday, so Friday? It, I've given you a window now to submit materials if you'd like. Okay. Um, uh huh. There is a um, homework from earlier the semester um, scripting homework from February twelfth. Um, okay. That I can't accept. So that that would be before spring break. Right. Um, that's not my question. My question is that um, I got a zero on it, but there is no explanation of why. I just, if you can just kind of look over and just let me know, that'd be great. Uh, send me an email about it. Okay. I got you. Anyone else? No one else? Okay, all right. Well, uh, that's, that's it, I believe. Uh, so we are done with the semester. So I know it's uh, been hectic and crazy, but you, uh, you, know, you survived the 72 online version. So uh, we are done with the semester. Um, as I said, you know, I'll, I'll be, I'm gonna try my hardest to have everything for May 1st. So in case you wanna decide to drop the class, um, just check, you should be able to tell how you, you are in, 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 the, in the grades. Remember, we still have our final exam. Make sure you submit your reports as soon as possible. As soon as you submit your reports, then I can, um, I can post the grades. Now, I won't be posting a final letter grade until I have the final exam, okay? So at least you can do the calculations on by looking at the grade book. Remember the, the distribution of the grades is on, on the syllabus. 
so you can see how everything breaks out. Um, and then otherwise, so I will, um, you know, um, so we're done with the semester. All we have left is the final. This is the last time that we were we are going to meet on this environment. So hopefully, I will. I, I you know, I wish you guys the best over this uh, period of time, and um, hopefully, I will. We will see each other again in the fall and on campus. Okay. So with that, um, you know, I. So. We're done. Take it easy, Galax. Yeah. We'll see you later. Yeah. Take care, Galax. Yep, yep. Enjoy your summers, guys. Peace. But don't forget the exam. <laughs> of course. <laughs> All right. All right. See you guys.